In today's video, we're going to discuss some more teams that may be looking to make some trades at the 2018 NHL Draft this summer. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Philadelphia Flyers, the Colorado Avalanche, and the Buffalo Sabres. And that's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, today we're discussing some more teams that may be looking to make some moves at this summer's NHL draft being held in June in Dallas, Texas. So as I mentioned, there's three teams we're going to focus on today. Uh, let's get started with the Buffalo Sabres. Now, obviously, the Buffalo Sabres were fortunate enough to land the number one overall pick. The Buffalo Sabres now have the ability to draft uh, generational talent. Rasmus Dahlin uh, should be a, a tremendous uh, addition to their club. Obviously, the Sabres have been uh, battling in the basement for a long time. The past decade has not been very kind to the Sabres organization with uh, not very much success, so this should help tremendously. But another move that I wouldn't be surprised they make, and it wouldn't be surprising if it came at the draft, was trading goaltender Robin Leonard. So it looks as though the team might be ready to hand over the net to youngster Linus Allmark, uh, and Robin Leonard is going to be an RFA this summer. So obviously Leonard needs a new contract, uh, but Leonard hasn't been terrible in Buffalo, but he hasn't been as great as they were hoping he would be, or as consistent. So I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them move him on uh, to another team. Now where might he go? Uh, there's some question marks, because there's some other teams that are certainly have some question marks around their goaltending as well. Uh, one of them would be the New York Islanders. So for example, are they bringing back Yarrow Halak? They're going in a new direction. There's certainly some question marks with the Islanders organization. Uh, St. Louis as well is another one. Carter Hutton's a free agent. If Carter Hutton departs via free agency, maybe they'd want to bring in Leonard to, to work with uh, Jake Allen as a 1A, 1B. That's a possibility. And another team that we're going to discuss here momentarily in another uh, part of their team would be the Philadelphia Flyers. So obviously the Flyers goaltending has been uh, terribly inconsistent uh, for quite some time. Right now they have obviously Mrazek, they have Neuvert, they have Elliott, and it's possible that uh, either one or none of them come back next year. It's hard to say. Uh, Mrazek needs a new contract, so obviously that's a possibility that uh, he may be traded. Maybe he can be traded straight up for Leonard. I don't know. Uh, but the Flyers have a lot of decisions to make on goaltending. Maybe Leonard's not the answer. The long-term answer is prospect Carter Hart, uh, but they may want to give him a little bit of time to play in the American League, where he's just going to be coming out of junior this year. Um, so they may not want to rush him to the NHL. They may opt to put him in the American League for a year or two uh, to kind of develop his game and kind of get some seasoning um, to be totally ready for the NHL level. So hard to say. Do they come back with Brian Elliott again? I don't know. There's a lot of question marks in Philadelphia. Goaltending is one of them. Not to say that Leonard's definitely going to end up there, but they're just certainly a team with question marks around goaltending. Um, either way, wouldn't be surprised uh, with Buffalo's uh, you know, ever going here rebuild uh, that they may try to move Robin Leonard and instead of bringing back another goalie, which could be a possibility, but I wouldn't be shocking if they didn't. If instead they try to obtain another draft pick, either first or second round, or whatever they're able to uh, obtain for his rights at that point in time. Uh, they could do a sign in trade where it might be better value for them uh, to get something better in return. Uh, but if he's unsigned and his rights are traded, obviously it'd be something a little bit less. But either way, I can see the Sabres maybe trying to get an additional pick or two. Uh, in this draft, since it's so deep, uh, and obviously uh, move on from Leonard, hand over the pipes to uh, Linus Allmark, uh, go with a young goalie, and try to develop him from there. So that's uh, something to keep your eyes on for the Buffalo Sabres. Wouldn't be surprised to see Robin Leonard with a new team come the fall. Now let's move on here to the Colorado Avalanche. Now we're also going to discuss some goaltending uh, with the Avs. Obviously they did make a signing uh, that was announced today. They signed a 29-year-old goalie uh, from the Czech Republic who's been playing in the KHL, uh, Pavel Frankuz. In case you don't uh, aren't familiar with this guy, he played for the Czech Republic at the Olympics and he had a tremendous tournament. Uh, he was a tremendous goalie for the Czech Republic. They would have went further if they would have had uh, the other parts of the team would have been stronger, but he was by far, in my opinion, their one of their top players, if not the top player uh, in the Olympics. He ended up playing six games, uh, finished with a 2.27 goals against and a 905 save percentage. Considering uh, the overall team, I think that's a very good showing. Uh, his past season in the KHL, uh, he played 35 games with a 1.8 goals against average and a 946 save percentage. So obviously he's been putting up strong numbers in the KHL. He had a tremendous showing over at the Olympics. Uh, he said he was a beast for the Czech Republic in the net. I'm not surprised at all to see him get an NHL 
opportunity. Uh, he was one of the guys that I kind of had my eye on after the tournament said, you know, if you take a look at some of these guys who uh, were in the NHL didn't participate in the Olympics, a lot of different players had a chance to showcase their talents. And he was certainly a guy that I thought took full advantage of that. And not surprised to see him get the opportunity to come over. Now the Avalanche have signed him to just a one-year, one-way deal, uh, which means that he's pretty well guaranteed a spot here in the NHL, unless they want to put him through waivers, which is they're not going to sign him to do that. So that says that uh, more than likely Jonathan Bernier and or Andrew Hammond will not return to the Avs. They both are obviously don't have contracts beyond the current season, so they're both free agents. Uh, so that tells me they're more likely going to be going with Varlamov, who obviously has uh, still has term on his deal. Uh, and they're going to probably go with Frank Hughes as the backup. Um, so obviously that means that, uh, I mean, Andrew Hammond may or may not find a new home in the NHL next year. Obviously he, he's had his struggles ever since the, the magical run he went on with the Senators. Um, and Bernier has been kind of hopping around from team to team on short-term deals the last few years as well. So it looks as though he may end up being on the move yet again to see if he can find more employment as a, as a backup elsewhere in the NHL, which I would imagine he probably would have a good shot at doing so. But uh, Pavel Francouz with the Avalanche uh, definitely should be their, probably their backup goalie next year. And where they only signed him for one year, I believe it was only 650000 That could turn out to be an absolute steal for them. If he has a tremendous year like he has the potential to, I'm sure he would probably get re-upped for uh, at least another two to three years after that. Hard to say how things will go. It's a, the NHL is a different game than overseas or the Olympics. But if his, uh, if his play there indicates what he might be, that could turn out to be a steal for the Avalanche. Now next, let's jump into the Philadelphia Flyers. The Flyers certainly have some speculation here. They've got a couple of first round picks this year. Uh, obviously they have their own, plus they have the one that belongs to the St. Louis Blues. So currently right now they hold picks number 14 and number 19. Uh, wouldn't be surprising to see Ron Hextall pull off a deal where they do one of two things here, either package um, a pick and a player or both picks or combination thereof to try to move up in the draft. Obviously they have additional picks there they can work with. So if there's a player that he really likes, that uh, may not be available at 14. Wouldn't be surprised to see them package something together here and move up in the draft to grab uh, a higher draft spot. I can't say for sure what team they may target. Um, there's been no links directly to any other clubs, but it's something I can see Hextall doing. He did it before to draft Travis Konechny. Um, and I can also see, they can take a look at last year's draft. That's when the Braden Shen uh, deal went down as well. So it's not, uh, Hextall seems to be quite known for these draft day trades. Uh, whether it be moving up or getting a player or whatnot. So I can see Hextall being a very active guy at the draft. Obviously, the Flyers were happy to make the playoffs, uh, reasonably happy with their season, but I think they can still acknowledge there's lots of uh, room and things to do there to, to take the next step forward to be a, more of a contender instead of a, a bubble playoff team. Um, you know, they, we could see something big go down. Hard to say. Uh, you know, I've seen some speculation, uh, and it's kind of just a theory that maybe they should look at trading Claude Giroux. I mean, it was not long ago that a lot of people thought Claude Giroux was finished. He had a terrible year a couple of years back. Um, you know, could he rebound or was he really on a massive decline? But he really bounced back in a big way this year, put up tremendous points, was in that conversation at least for the Hart Trophy. Uh, you know, can he duplicate that going forward? Or should they maybe consider getting, um, getting something back like, where his wall his value is really, really high? So, I mean, not, I don't have any, any definite confirmed rumors or speculation to say that they're going to look at trading Drew. It was just a theory that I've seen a few people discussing online, and I thought it was interesting because a lot of teams miss out when they want to trade players. They do it when their value is too low, and they don't get the return, and it makes it hard for the organization to move forward. So give me your, your thoughts and your comments down below. Do you think the Flyers would entertain possibly trading Claude Giroux coming off a fantastic year while his value was high. So they might be able to get some a good haul in return. Plus with their draft picks they have uh, for this year's draft to really help them move forward as an organization. Uh, they very well may not uh, decide to do that, but it's just a theory that I've seen online that I'd be curious to see what everybody else thinks if that's something they should do or not. But the Flyers, I do fully expect Ron Hextall to be one of the more active GMs at the draft. I um, mean, there's going to be at least a half dozen or more of them, I think, that are going to be trying to be pretty active with deals. So it should be a very fun time um, and interesting time as well for hockey fans to be paying attention and seeing what goes down. One last thing to note here, there will be a video coming up tomorrow. Uh, once the Dallas Stars are rumored to be hiring uh, University of Denver coach Jim Montgomery as their next head coach. Once that news is made official, I'll be making a video now, most likely tomorrow, to kind of discuss the hiring 
and give you my thoughts on that. Also, the World Hockey Championships are going to be getting underway here very soon as well. We have a video coming out probably tomorrow as well discussing um, all the different countries, what their rosters are, who's going to be participating. Kind of give you our thoughts and do like a primer video for that tournament. So stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams. There's plenty of content here for all fan bases to enjoy. So if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up as well. We appreciate that. And if you haven't checked us out on Twitter, you're going to see our Twitter handle on the screen right now. It's linked down below in the description. We're very active on Twitter, so check that account out as well. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.